class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this is another in a series of videos to help us understand how trigonometric substitutions work when integrating. And this one's a little bit more complicated than the previous one because we've thrown in some coefficients here just to help you to uh, see how our deliberate and intentional choices can be used to take a complicated integral lacking any of that backwards chain rule structure and turn it into something that has the structure that we like using our trigonometric identities. So watch this one. Notice it's four minus eight X squared. Now, if you keep your target on the identity one minus sine squared, which is the same as cosine squared, what I wanna do is algebraically manipulate this so that it looks like a one minus sine squared ultimately. So first, my issue is I don't have one minus, I have four minus. So let's make this first move. The first move we're gonna make is, we're gonna factor out the four. If you factor out a four from this binomial underneath that square root, we get one minus two x squared. So I hope you can see that if you distribute that back through, four times one is the four, four times two x squared is the eight x squared. We're just making a, a, a factoring move here. Now let's continue making some moves to simplify this. The square root of four is two. So if I simplify this, it's really a factor of one half. And that factor of one half can be brought out front of the integral. So what I now have is, is this. So now we're even closer to our goal of having a one minus sine squared. But let's make it as clear as possible how that might happen. One minus, we wanted to say sine squared. So what quantity would you square to get two X squared? I hope you see for sure, X squared, maybe the X squared, but two. What quantity would you square to get two? Well, the square root of two. So inside of there, if I think of it as one minus something squared, that something would have to be the square root of two times x so that it's equivalent to two x squared. Now what this does for us, I hope you see, is it sets us up for the one minus sine squared if we make a very deliberate and intentional move and then just deal with the consequences. The deliberate move is this. We're gonna let the square root of two times x equal the sine of theta. Because if I make that move, then this becomes the sine of theta. One minus sine of theta squared is cosine squared of theta. The square root of cosine squared is just cosine and life is good but we do have to deal with the consequences. And we also have to deal with this dx. So let's deal with the dx. First of all, if the square root of two times x is equal to the sine of theta, then x is equal to, uh, if we divide by the square root of two or multiply by one over the square root of two, we will get an algebraically equivalent statement. And now let's take the derivative. The derivative of x with respect to theta the derivative of one over the square root of two times sine is one over the square root of two times cosine. The derivative of sine being cosine, of course. And then just one more move, dx therefore is gonna equal one over the square root of two times cosine theta times d theta. Just multiplying that d theta over. So these are the deliberate moves and the consequences that we're gonna take advantage of as we continue this process. Let me come up over here so you can see. So the first move, well, our coefficient of one half is still there. We're still integrating. We now have one over the square root of one minus, but now this square root of two X is what we've made, uh, we've let that equal the sine of theta. So we now have the sine of theta squared. And then dx, if you look at our consequences here, dx is one over the square root of two cosine theta d theta. Now I know this is looking a little messy, 
but it's not as bad as you think when we start to simplify it. Let's start to simplify it. First, another factor, another, uh, the factor of one over the square root of two can come out front. So we're gonna have a one half, we're gonna have a one over the square root of two. The one minus sine squared is the same as cosine squared from our Pythagorean identities. And then that we brought out front, so just cosine theta d theta. So this fraction we can just write one over two times the square root of two. The square root of cosine squared is just cosine theta. And here it is. If you've seen the previous videos, you've seen how this works out so well. Now it's not magic, it's not a surprise. We made it happen that way. We made deliberate choices so that this would happen. And so this all boils down to the integral of 1d theta. Now this time we have this extra coefficient of 1 over 2 times the square root of 2. So it's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 times the integral of 1d theta is just theta. Don't forget your plus c. Now to wrap this up, we are going to come back and kind of transform this back in terms of the variable x. We're going to use this statement here to get this uh, final answer in terms of x. We know that the sine of theta is the square root of 2 times x. Therefore, theta is the inverse sine of the square root of 2 times x. So theta is either, notation is fine, the inverse sine or the arc sine. So let's bring that back over and write our final answer in terms of x. It's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 times theta. I'm going to use the arc sine notation. So arc sine of the square root of 2 times x. And don't forget, plus c. So there is our final integral. Now we're going to check that one as well to see if that makes sense. Like, how does an arc sign come out of that? Is that really true? I hope to convince you of it. Um, so we're going to jump over to Wolfram Alpha and see. So we've been working on the integral of 1 over the square root of 4 minus 8x squared and seeing how by hand a trigonometric substitution would allow us to find that antiderivative or to compute this integral. But just to confirm it, I thought we'd use Wolfram Alpha to check to see if our work makes sense. So we type in integral, type in the integrand, and uh, SQRT is the, the command to make a square root. And you see here that Wolfram Alpha did read it exactly the way we want. And we do see that Wolfram Alpha produces the same result that we got on the whiteboard. It's using the inverse sine notation instead of arc sine, but the same idea plus that integration constant. So yes, our work does uh, is confirmed by Wolfram Alpha. So all of our hard work here on the whiteboard is confirmed by the work that we did on Wolfram Alpha. So thanks for joining us. Click on the next video to see another example of a trigonometric substitution. And please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe. See you soon.